Okay, so well, we are live now. Welcome everyone for the Saturday workshop. I know you all are waited for this weekend to un you know to wait for Dimple to answer all your questions. Today we have Aru from our team who's gonna tell us more about Ayurveda and today we're gonna discuss a lot about millets, right? That's what I could see in the questions. Aru, please tell, tell us more about you and your expertise. So, uh, I mean, basically, I work with millets. So I run a home kitchen from my house where I sort of, uh, you know, like make people eat more millets. The idea was like, I actually started out as an environmentalist. So, yeah. so then like thinking about the soil health, thinking about the body and stuff like that. That's how I got into introducing more millets. And then I sort of, you know, dive deep into these grains. And these are like, millets are basically our traditional grain, which are actually well before rice and wheat came into picture. Okay. So that's how I sort of got into them. And um, um, there are actually nine of them. So there is uh, Jawar, Bajra and Ragi that we sort of, everyone probably obviously so knows about them. But there are like these ones that are really nice, which are foxtail, odo, proso, little millet, you know, brown top millet. So all of these, like, you know, I, I mean, I sort of ate them. I also had like a, like a lot of health issues. Okay. So like how I started to, why I started the kitchen was because I sort of felt the changes in my body yeah. and my energy. And I just like became totally well by just introducing these grains in my diet. So yeah. that's how I started the kitchen. Wow. Okay. I guess today it's going to be all about millet. So I guess you should grab your notebooks to note down everything what Aru is going to share with us. But starting with why are millets different and how they are different? Yeah. So I mean, uh, for those people who like, you know, probably tried Jawar Bajra, they would already have sort of experienced it. So, you know, there are actually a lot of grains. There are, there's wheat, then, um, um, I mean, I think I'll also like so, sort of talk about gluten right now. So, I mean, I think everybody already probably knows about gluten. So gluten is, uh, so a lot of people are also having uh, gluten allergies and, uh, you know, not like wheat is not suiting a lot of people and they are also shifting towards uh, a more gluten-free diet. So millets sort of work as a wonderful way towards getting into it. So millets are different in the way that, you know, they are gluten-free. They've, uh, and they've actually got more nutrition in terms of more vitamins, more omega-3s than the other grains do. And uh, they're actually just a superfood, you know, they're a super house uh, in themselves. And like we've traditionally had people just survive on millets. So, you know, I, I have actually gone and seen a lot of... Uh, different communities around India who actually just survive on millets. So these are these superfoods which like they're they're a grain which already have a lot of vitamins in them and a lot of also fat in them. And like there is no one particular sort of grain that I can point to for a, uh, for a particular thing. So they're like so interesting that you know like every millet would be good for a particular thing. And so like foxtail is a more subtler uh, sort of millet. So, you know, it's softer, even like, uh, even kids can sort of have it, you know, it's a more softer grain. So like all millets are very different yeah. ones. Sort of, uh, I mean, I think they're so amazing that everyone should just try eating them. Like it's, it's so different because, you know, all of them taste differently. Yeah. All of them make you feel different. And yeah, yeah. I mean, there's this amazing food you can make with it. Well, can you tell us from the Ayurveda perspective how millets uh, are helpful and how they're gonna, uh, you know, help us balance our doshas? Is yeah. there any specific such reason in Ayurvedic language? So actually, in Ayurveda, like I'll tell you, like millets are, they're actually called kudanya. In Ayurveda, they basically call millets as kudanya, which is an inferior grain. 
which is not to say that they're not good it's just a way of saying that you know you should have lesser amount of it like it yeah. should be your staple yeah. that's how they've sort of taken it but if yeah. you also sort of you know like like i have dived like lot of deeper into sort of looking at you know millets ayurvedically yeah and but in like the mainstream sort of books or anywhere you will not find so much because like you know millets are basically rain fed crops so they they've still not become very regular so a lot of research hasn't been done about them in ayurveda so what you'll generally hear from people is that they are very harsh yeah they are very hard and drying and heavy yeah. and heaty yeah. which is what you'll hear from a lot of people yeah but once you like sort of dive deeper into it so you know yeah. a lot of like even ayush so ayush has these papers on like very particular like you have to like really dive deep into it but you will find you know they've actually written a lot of these minutes as sort of uh, like fox say like i said it's sweeter it has a sweeter nature even ragi even if like you know it is sweeter so i mean like for every millet i wouldn't like there's no way i can say that it will be work for one particular dosha yeah. for all the nine millets yeah it's for you know sort of balancing certain guna and certain dosha okay so okay. yeah so consider if i'm a vata person okay but you said that they are very rough and very dry so would you recommend someone with a uh, this prakriti to have millets i think i would recommend everyone to have millets and yeah no but because see there are different ways of eating them but li- probably to the right uh, when you cook it in the right way and when you have it in the right way then it makes exactly. sense exactly exactly so like bata we know is sort of you know they're already dry they're right. already rough exactly right they're already dry they're already rough so i think for vata the perfect way to actually i think actually basically everyone should also do it you have to soak it overnight so take the millets soak it overnight and have it in the morning and cook them well yeah so add more water cook them well and add more fat yeah so, you know like so what happens is when you soak them the dryness goes away yeah and also the heatiness goes away so if you've dried them overnight that has already happened and if you've added the fat that's that's actually more nourishing to your body yeah. and also like for vata i would like even after all of doing all of that i would still recommend that they should avoid brown top millet because see a lot of like what happens with grains is the soil where you grow in right the soil yeah. where you grow in the amount of water that you've taken sort of also impacts the qualities and the gunas of that grain so brown top is a very dry grain so you know no matter how much you treat it how much you do anything to it it will not be really good for a vata person so like vata i would say brown top and kodo sometimes not too much uh so brown top you proso little bit so proso and brown top i would i would uh, recommend vada to avoid you know even after all of those things they should avoid it avoid. but everything else uh, you can sort of have so i think cooked, well cooked yeah, yeah yeah but also like fox tail i think is really good for vada it's it's actually sweeter like you know if you really like eat it yeah you even like when you bite it because the taste and texture also comes with you take the grain and you sort of bite it you get the yeah. taste it yeah. is good. So okay and uh, we'll go to the next dosha what about kapha dosha kapha can have all millets <laughs> <laughs> yeah kapha should actually really have all millets you know i have so many people who are actually older they yeah. have like thin bodies yeah they sort of couldn't lose weight yeah and like they they've been eating my breads and stuff which i make like only with millets and they've lost weight Like even older people, they're like, we've not lost weight for ten years. Why are we losing weight? We're not even like dieting. <laughs> so I think kapha should actually have all millets. <laughs> wow. They can actually have all the millets because yeah, millets actually have a lot of they as an absorb water. So they have that. They'll have that effect on your body too. They will. They will help you because if you've noticed, like kapha has water retention, right? And they also have fat accumulation. So millet yeah. work amazingly with that. Though if you're like sort of trying to lose weight and all of that, I would say avoid um, foxtail again because see, like I yeah. said, foxtail is good for vata. 
So like Kafa should avoid like the softer, nicer millets, which are like foxtail. Yeah. Otherwise, all the others they can have. Okay. Also, like if you're trying to lose weight, I would say don't have so much proso because proso is actually super high on proteins. Okay. Yeah. And what about the last dosha, pita? Hmm. Yeah. So pita is a little because see they are heating. Some of them are heating. But you know, like I'll tell you, like there is a very traditional way of sort of eating millets. So how we also started eating grains was not by breads or rotis or anything. Mm-hmm. Like traditionally, grains came into our lives with gruels. So we would like add a lot of yeah. more water and yeah. cook them and eat them. So like I think um, you know, sort of cooking like that. that makes them softer so th- and also not so heating yeah and but also like you know like in, this is like in rajasthan so like if you've heard of rabri i don't know i mean all like all of india sort of has different versions of it rabri rab i think ambali ambali in the south i <laughs> i i should ask my mom for that these are basically fermented versions yes So yeah. you know what they sort of do is they keep it, they keep the grain overnight and then they ferment it and then they eat it in the morning and there are so different ways of eating it so you know where some people sort of uh, just put raw onions in it and you have it and yeah. another way to just cool it is like we know yogurt is sort of cooling right yeah you can add yogurt to it and sort of it cools it down yeah make it sweeter like you know add some sugar it cools it down But so are these combinations good from the Ayurveda perspective? I mean, I also like sort of feel that uh, you can't add yogurt, but like since these things are very traditional, like these things are, you know, what we've eaten forever. I yeah. think this sort of works because ambali, rabri, like you, you cannot like. You cannot, you cannot, uh, just a minute. Rabri. Just gonna, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, these sort of uh, older sort of. So how I also work with is mostly using the traditional recipes. So I'm not making sort of my own recipes, but I'm also just working with traditional recipes because you know you go back and you sort of talk to people about their grandmothers' recipes, and all of them have these millets. Like all of them have foxtail added. They've made tali peet with foxtail. With proso and people have been eating it, so it's yeah. not. To, and everyone has their own way, you know. Like, uh, yeah. So like, rabri is something that they sort of eat in Rajasthan a lot, which is a very hot state. So see, like, even when you're eating something, right? It also depends not just on your body type. It also depends on where you're living. So like, yeah, Rajasthan can be a really hot state, but. I mean, if you go to the villages, they still eat bajra even during the summer. But they eat it in the way that I do, just told you that they make yeah. the kichra, they keep it and open, then. and then in the morning, some of them have it with a little sugar. Some of them add some dahi, and they eat it, and they're full for the day. You know, you have so much energy. Yeah, and, yeah. But tell me about these whole fancy salads. What you see, uh, you know, with all the millets, all kinds of millets. You see these bloggers, you know, with all kinds of millets. You see these beautifully decorated salads. How healthy are those to have in that manner? The kuana with nicely topped on to it. No, so I mean, like salads, I'm not a big fan of as it is. So like, not only <laughs> salad, like generally salads for sure. Like, if you're cooking some, I mean, if you're eating something that's cooked and you're mixing it with something that's raw. That in itself is wrong. <laughs> yeah, it should not be done on its own. Um, but like millets with, uh, I mean, it's the same thing. Like you know, some grains with some raw thing, I wouldn't prescribe for anything. So I mean, for millets yeah. also, I would obviously not prescribe it. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, <laughs> sort of uh, um, you know cooked. Yeah, but I mean, you know, that can also help. So like. If it's cooked, like slightly steamed vegetables, uh, and steamed uh, sort of uh, 
I mean, I'm not a big fan of salads actually. Okay. Okay. We're not going to ask you anything about salads because yeah, I'm more the sort of uh, Indian food kinds. But yeah. Okay. You have told us the benefits. Now tell us what are the easy, quick ways like one can consume with it. Like just a couple of your favorite recipes, easy and quick. So I actually have a, I actually keep posting recipes. I actually have a Insta handle called Millet Kitchen. It's just literally called Millet Kitchen. <laughs> and I like it's called all recipes. So I kind mm-hmm. of keep posting recipes. Yeah. I basically like I mean easy ways to incorporate it are So I mean if you sort of traditionally make idli. Yeah. Like you know making idli with millets is actually Yagi idli I have heard like that's very popular I believe exactly. so you know like it's literally you just replace the rice with the millet yeah I'm sorry the millet with the rice and that's it yeah like that is all that's required and um, I mean something also that's really nice which is traditionally the something that you sort of give to kids is the ragi malt so you know like an easier way like because you don't know everyone has a really strong agni yeah right some people have so yeah i think like i would also like to say that if you don't if you feel you have digestive issues and you don't have no. agni, you should sort of i think you should stay away from eating the harder forms of yeah. milk you should probably just focus on the gruels which have extra water and stuff like that yeah ambali yeah okay. so, yeah and sprouted millet so you know like traditionally india in india we've been giving kids sprouted ragi because ragi is this amazing grain that has a lot of calcium it's got 10 times more calcium than even and like what they say you know in the kapha stage the baby is uh, 0 yeah. to 14 they build up the calcium their bones yeah, yeah, yeah. now i am able to you know relate more <laughs> Not that I'm a mother, but just I have overheard dimples so many times, kapha stage, building bones and structure. So yeah, I guess that's the right way to give kids. Every parent who's, who's watching should know down these. No, but also like, see, like we used to give them sprouted millet. Like we never give kids uh, the finger millet, like, like just the finger millet raw one. So sprouted, how the process goes is you sort of, uh, uh, you know, soaked it. And then you've made it into sprouts. Yeah. So it's already pre-digested. And yeah. also phytic acids gone out. So it's super easy for the body to digest. Yeah. So I think like if you have a weak agni. And if yeah, you're that's weak, that's, a better that's way to the have. best sort of recipe to dimple. We have dimple here to talk from, <laughs> talk from the Ayurveda perspective. All my questions which were coming towards you, she's got answer now. <laughs> No, I, I'm enjoying the talk. Carry on, Aru. You were saying something. I'm happy to like pitch in the Ayurvedic perspective of the millet information that you're sharing. Uh, yeah, so no, I was just saying like sort of the best way to give kids or someone with a very weak agni is using sprouted millets because they've already been pre-digested. They've had all the phytic acid go away. And so if you see like, you know, sort of to check how something will sort of digest inside your body is to also see how long it will take to cook outside. So if you'll notice with like the sprouted grains, they cook super fast. You can like sprouted ragi is just 10 minutes of just cooking and and then you can just consume it. And And in fact, with sprout, you can even add a piece of jaggery to it when you're giving your children sprouted millets. Add a few pieces of jaggery to it because jaggery is heaty. And it's actually pitta in nature stimulates a digestive fire, the agni mm-hmm. and the digestive juices. It also helps in breaking down the complex, uh, uh, you know, uh, skin of the millets. Yeah. Yeah, and now people have come like with these really innovative uh, recipes to sort of make kids eat, which is also add chocolate to it. So they make like a yes. ragi malt chocolate. And, you know, like it's a beautiful way to add millets to even the kids' nutrition. Because I think ragi is also like super important. Like, uh, because like just right now, I've been talking to these people also in Urissa who are working with the kids uh, in the villages. They've added ragi laddus 
in the kids icds and they've seen like the malnutrition has gone down immensely so sort of looking at certain ways where it's also delicious for the kids yeah so important because just like i think laddus are amazing actually <laughs> <laughs> because you know like like so just the traditional way because you're sort of uh, i mean <clears throat> like so like laddus is super easy like you make the atta laddus you can actually just make any millet laddus like even foxtail millet barfi like this sounds most re- relatable to me all the recipes what you have told me until now the laddus are most interesting ones no even barfi so like you literally don't have to change anything it's like how you use wheat wheat atta you can use the millet atta but like you just have to see that millets are a little drying so just add little more fat and they will also take in more water and what are the favorite so- millets aru for you for making these uh, sweet dishes like barfi and laddus what are your favorite millets that you recommend so i think for for desserts actually i mostly only use ragi and foxtail and little millet those three are the only ones that i sort of use for desserts because i've noticed like you know jowar proso and uh, bajra also i use for desserts but like the other ones which are jowar bajra proso and uh, which else so barnyard and stuff like that so barnyard is bitter so some of them end up getting bitter so it's not it's not as enjoyable to eat And, and which is why we don't recommend some of the millets for a vata prakriti because of the bitter taste yeah. the ones that are bitter and astringent can be too dry and rough for a vata to digest yeah. so in that case we generally tell them to have it with lots of yogurt because yogurt has active bacterial enzymes that helps in digesting the millets yeah, yeah and we so always I- pair millets with buttermilk yeah 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 so that's exactly what i was telling them i was telling them about rabri so like rab ambali and all of that which we've traditionally been eating so all of that has buttermilk in it right so yes that it's also super cooling for the body like even like in rajasthan you literally we can even have it in the hot scorching sun in summer you can still have rabri rabri is made from which millet so i mean you can actually make it with any millet so basically like india sort of has forms of rabri everywhere because rabri is a rajasthan sort of thing but ambali is is had in the south and you go to different communities around india adivasis would have a different millet that they use so i have seen people make it with kodo millet i like it how you know you're making it the local food to be consumed like exactly. because simple keeps on saying this have local food have local honey it is local you know like i've literally gone like i know of one place in bundelkhand where they only consume kodo millet because they are only growing kodo millet so the, and it's just they you just use it in different ways like you know in a different sort of uh, like we were just talking like about with rabri or just dry or just cook with roti and stuff like that so it's just you can cook it like you can eat any millet but you sort of have to cook it in a certain way Um, very interesting yeah. and when you saute the millet when you try to knead a dough to make your uh, chapati uh, millet chapati what are the ingredients you recommend while kneading the dough besides water of course besides water so i mean we can use buttermilk we can use yogurt you can also like if you have a really low agni and you need an extra sort of you know digestion aid so I, what i actually do is i make like i make a spice blend with digestive you know coriander seeds haldi king and stuff so i keep that with me so i prepare it like every week uh, and i keep that and i need that into the dough so if you're also like super low on agni or have a super low digestive thing so you can add those also and like how we've traditionally been using uh, ajwain you can add some ajwain and you can need that with it so it depends on your body type and how you're feeling uh, you can sort of you know just change how you're uh, kneading your dough and making the roti and we usually recommend either kneading the dough with buttermilk or with yogurt directly and some carom seeds and adding ghee as well because even carom seeds helps in aiding digestion yes. so you can even add cumin seeds if you don't have access to carom seeds cumin seeds is also common native in nature 
stimulates the agni and the digestive juices in the stomach. So even that's an excellent way of doing it. And we also prepared this traditional recipe called kadi, where we make kadi with buttermilk, with yogurt and turmeric, some curry leaves, ghee, fenugreek, carom seeds, and cumin seeds, and little mustard seeds and pink salt. Curry is also another ingredient that you must have when you're having millets. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what are the... <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. You were saying? Yeah, no, I was just saying I love bajra curry. But you know, we've also been like... Absolutely, I love curry. <laughs> <laughs> so we've also actually been making like, you know, bati with millets is super easy. So just like not sort of changing anything, but also just like our regular traditional recipes, if you add millets to it, they're super nourishing and they don't feel really different. And it's nice that, you know, you're sort of using the local grains and you're, because you know, the whole idea is, I'll tell you why I sort of also focus on millets is because like wheat has become like a monoculture. Right. Wheat's become and wheat was never traditionally part of the Indian subcontinent uh, diet at all. Wheat was brought in after the colonial rule. Not and all. now people are complaining of gluten intolerances and now they're willing to listen to dietitians to go back to millets like bajra, jawar, makhai, kodu, ragi, amaranth, which is rajgira. Rajgira was technically a stable diet. But rajgira is uh, not a millet, Dimple. I think so. Rajgira are... comes in there? No, I think that these are actually a lot of misconceptions like sort of a flying away because I'm also like very scientifically minded. So, I mean, these are pseudo cereals like amaranth, uh, quinoa and uh, kuttu buckwheat. These are pseudo cereals. These are not your millets. So scientifically, these are not your millets. Your millets so are how are they different from other grains? Like how do you differentiate millets from... Uh, the regular grains that we have and the regular cereals that we have? Um, I mean, I think it's so, I mean, I'm, I don't know. So, I mean, right now I can sort of not tell you exactly the scientific basis because I've read it long back, but then I sort of don't remember. But uh, these three that I just said, these are pseudo cereals. Quinoa, buckwheat uh, and rajgira. These are pseudo cereals. They will not come into millets. Millets are basically like the ones at least in India because Africa has two more that I've, I have no idea about. But India has nine. Uh, and these other pseudo cereals don't come into that. They are not millets. Which you can okay. also see from the amount of water that's required. Millets are generally those grains that require less water to grow and they are rain fed crops. They will grow anywhere. That's why you also see the price difference. Millets cost lesser. Rajgira and Kutu and stuff like that cost higher. So and, and rice and wheat are the highest, the most expensive of the lot. Exactly. So these are expensive grains. These are not your so millets are your traditional grains. They are the oldest grains. They are older than wheat and rice, actually. And they were the first ones to be eaten in the form of gruel. Wow. So wow. that's why we used to have a lot of porridge, right? In our uh, Indian recipe, we used to have a lot of um, right. uh, dalias which we, we used to have for breakfast. And now it has been put in a box in the form of cereals. I swear. Doesn't make any sense. Make any sense. <laughs> no, because I'll tell you that also sort of doesn't make sense because uh, like millets, you know, like how, like I just said, they're a super food and people have been just surviving on millets, like not even getting, because it's also like, you know, something that even poor people sort of eat. And, you know, when they don't have so much whatever nuts and, you know, like whatever the antioxidants uh, sort of thing that the urban upper class sort of gets to eat. Uh, because millets sort of have an exterior which has vitamins, which also has a lot of fats, which so that's why it's a superfood. It can literally you can like eat it and you feel so like, I mean, I don't know, it kind of changed my life. <laughs> that's precisely why I am sort of making everyone yeah. eat it. Because but, but Aru, uh, I'm so sorry I'm cutting you off. What is the right time? Because in Ayurveda, we, we have right times for everything, for fruits, for different food. What, are the, what is the right time for minute? Time for minute. Lunch. <laughs> yes. Always, always. When the sun is at the peak. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When your digestive fire, fire is the highest. No, and you know, you like, can also 
have it for breakfast if you're having it say around 10 30 11 so say if you've done with your herbal teas and spice teas and you've had a small portion of fruits your metabolic fire has been stimulated you can also have it for breakfast provided it's 10 30 11 o'clock it's like a late brunch then it's fine and then it has to be the only meal only big meal that you have and after that you have to slow down on the quantity of food that you eat and uh, it's ideally good to have a lot of fruits on the days you're eating millets, but never with millets, maybe one or two hours later to aid in one or two hours before, not after, sorry, one or two hours before to enhance the gut flora and break down the millets faster. And pre-soaked is obviously the best uh, when it comes to Vata Prakriti, which we speak about quite often because that seems to be the Prakriti that most people are diagnosed <laughs> with nowadays dryness and roughness of the skin dryness and roughness of the hair in that case they need foods that are moisture laden and since millets have less moisture and tend to be bitter or astringent in nature we usually recommend vata prakriti to pair it with a lot of yogurt buttermilk ghee uh, good which is jaggery and sweetness as well right yeah it, it's so strange that everything what our ancestor, ancestors did 7,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago, it's just being packed nicely and being sold up, sold to us, like the consumers at a higher price. <laughs> In the wrong way. Like I'll tell you, I think it's actually perfect because I'll tell you, like when you packaged it, like it's really funny to see all these millet pancake mixes and stuff like that. And they have a shelf life of a year. That is, I think, ridiculous. Because, like I said, like the exterior has fats, it's got vitamins. What, like, if it has a shelf life of one year and if it's staying okay, like not getting rancid for one year, they've removed it out. So, you know, millets need to be had fresh. And that's the, like, when you see all those nutritional labels, right, written, you're getting that much vitamin C, you're getting so much of uh, fats from it, blah, blah, blah. That will only be if they are fresh. They will not, if they have the shelf life of sort of one year, which is also sort of like, you know, people need to sort of know it because a lot of people are eating it like that. It's just like eating maida then, you know, like for your body, if you want those minerals, if you want those sort of nutritional uh, benefits, you have to eat them fresher, which is sort of, I kind of like it that, you know, like then people have to move to the fresher sort of food. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to read out some of the grains that are suitable for vata, pitta and kapha so that, you know, we can go through it and educate the viewers uh, better. Let's begin with vata. The grains that are good for them is usually amaranth, cooked oats, pancakes, quinoa, rice, spelt, seitan, sprouted wheat bread and whole wheat. These are the only things that we usually recommend for vata prakriti. And we tell them to stay off all refined grains like barley, bread with yeast, buckwheat, dry cereals, definitely no, because it's too dry, corn, couscous, crackers, granola, millets. We usually tell them to stay off simply because, you know, the preparation method is different for vata and pitta and kapha. Crackers, granola, millets, muesli, oat bran, dry oats, rice cake, rye and wheat bran. Let's discuss the vata prakriti. Vata tends to have a dry, rough, hard koshta and they require a lot of greasy foods to moisturize their digestive tract so that they can pass stools easily and don't have digestion issues or uh, constipation issues. Right, Aru? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, yeah. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, but like I was just saying, like, you know, like since millets are these grains that have sort of uh, not been researched so much, so even like you would not find... Because millets, you can't treat them, like at least for me, you can't treat them as one grain. There are nine of them and all, like all nine of them have different properties. So you, you list down the nine grains again for the viewers? What are the nine millets that we're talking about here today? Yeah, so the one that uh, mostly everyone would know about would be ragi, which is your finger millet, and bajra, which is pearl millet, and juar, which is sorghum. So these are ones that, you know, they've become mainstream. Everybody's been using them. But we have these really nice ones called foxtail millet, which has a lot, I mean, so these little millets would have a lot of different names in different uh, uh, states of India. So I'll just name the English ones. So foxtail millet, then you have little millet, 
and you have proso millet and you have podo millet and um, barnyard millet which is samak again so i think that a lot of people know because people generally consume it during fasting okay and, that's interesting yeah and we've also got brown top millet so brown top millet is a millet that's it's a little expensive right now because we it was going extinct but it's got amazing nutritional properties so, so someone's know. asking is it a misconception uh is it a myth or a fact millets cause thyroid it is a, so i'll tell you like what happened was this was supposed to it's actually a um it's a myth i would say because you know a lot of these sort of studies that have been done they were done on a certain group of people and so you know who had not been consuming enough iodine and stuff like that and then it had sort of come that millets are not good for thyroid so i mean i think it's just sort of different ways of cooking grains and consuming them even people with thyroid can have it you know so soaking overnight cooking them well even people with thyroid can have it because a lot of how these studies also come up with is we have not sort of seen how they've consumed it we have not sort of seen the additional factors you know like what have they not consumed so it's not millet like i'll tell you there's this guy uh, there is this uh, doctor called he's called the millet man of india actually so he has cured so many lifestyle diseases he's cured a lot of diseases he's in bangalore actually i forgot his name uh, but do, yeah i don't know but in his outside his house in bangalore there's a line he just puts people on a diet of millets so he's got people all over all over the world actually he's got a lot of followers in the us too they don't consume any other grain they only consume millets and they in fact yeah the first thing we take people off when they come on a diet is we take them off wheat we take them off maida which is refined flour simply because the gut doesn't have the bacterial enzyme to digest genetically modified seeds wheat nowadays is gmo genetically modified uh, seeds uh, which is even more difficult to digest and causes a lot of food intolerances and even what is called leaky gut syndrome where the food starts causing holes in the gut and it starts leaking from the gut into the blood stream the blood then goes into an antibody mode and starts attacking its own good cells and as well as the wheat that has entered and then these toxins or ama which is undigested food then gets recirculated back to different organs including your heart liver kidney intestines and brain and that's what causes brain fog and kidney stones and gallbladder stones so that's one of the main reasons if your digestion is not right your absorption and assimilation will not be right your metabolization will definitely not happen your ability to generate new tissues is about to happen exactly so going on like an exclusive millet diet especially if you're in a tropical country like india we have access to local millets nothing like it even dals we have 300 varieties of dals how many varieties do we actually have in the kitchen five and we're looking for protein uh from animals and other you know uh, canned products like whey protein and such i shouldn't be mentioning brands but then you know we're constantly relying on packaged foods or unhealthy animal foods which are loaded with cortisol and stress to consume protein which you don't need because you have 300 varieties of pulses and dals and lentils which is enough to take care of your protein need and millets has a lot of uh, 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 health benefits what are the health benefits aru if you might share those with us so i mean again all different millets would have different health benefits so like you said like proso millet has the most amount of uh, proteins and um, i mean foxil is the softer one which vata can also have and ragi like i think everybody probably obviously knows like it's got a lot of calcium and um, so i mean all of them have a lot of uh, i mean they've got different vitamin content so they've actually got more vitamins than wheat or rice would and um, actually more so i think they probably like all the millets have more fat content than any other grain if provided you are eating the exterior you are like you're not having the husked ones and all of those vitamins like it's really crucial to know that all of the vitamins and most of the uh, minerals that are there in uh, millets are on the exterior yeah 
so i mean like sort of like i also i, I think i'd also like to add to what uh, dimple sort of said about us having a lot of lentils would be we actually have a lot of varieties of rice locally to india which we've forgotten we have like lakhs of rices so i mean uh, those also sort of have been talked about in ayurveda and we've sort of forgotten about them so i think so we should also like um, yeah i mean because generally when i also Grace, the rice ingredient in fact you know we have a treatment called navrakili in ayurveda where we take cooked rice red rice uh we used to purchase like in kilos in our clinic at prana in bandra and we would cook the rice with medicated uh, herbs as well as a little bit of milk and then we would it it take us literally one one and a half hours to cook this rice by the way it absorbs so much water then we would put it in a poultice bag while it's warm soak it in warm medicated milk and massage the body of patients who have paralysis and multiple sclerosis do you know what red rice along with milk does it tightens the tissues and muscles and it actually allows you to regain uh, sensation in your nerves as well so people with multiple sclerosis and paralysis have actually been able to use their limbs more effectively after this treatment called navrakili which is literally red rice treatment and the first ingredient we include in the diet of patients when they come to us with constipation is rice most of them get off rice in order to lose weight the first thing we put back inside the diet is rice for dinner the best thing to eat for dinner is dal rice it could be white rice red rice black rice brown rice of course even basmati rice has a misconception that it's bad for the knees but it's actually very good for the pitta prakriti basmati rice it's easier to digest it's got cooling properties it doesn't cause overheating of the body as well unlike brown rice right uh, aru yeah no so i'd also like to add to that because i'm more also into the farming sort of perspective and saving seed sort of perspective of the grains so it's not just these we've actually got lakhs of rice we have uh, i mean there are these people who are growing these uh, rice in rajamundi which are i mean have you've never even heard of them like you know so uh, so you know sort of also including these rice in so like when i'm working as with millets i also sort of include these so that's how also you know like i sort of stay off wheat i sort of stay off all of that so along with millets i sort of also add rice so you know rice sort of also has a more nourishing and a more cooling effect so you can actually literally survive on just a millet and a rice diet but rice again i wouldn't i don't consume so much basmati there are actually more traditional rices not basmati not sona masuri you've got lakhs of rices so i mean sort of also looking into that um is what i would uh, suggest in fact I must tell the audience uh, that we're soon coming up with a three-hour study module on millets and grains in India. The local grains, millets, different kinds of rice, lentils, beans that is available in India because the whole of Ayurveda is about eating local, eating seasonal, eating fresh, so that you can actually acclimatize your body to the topographic and geographic conditions of the city that you're living in, to your habitat. the more you eat local the more you will consume the local bacteria and enzymes which will help you enhance your gut flora and thus improve your digestion and your overall health so we are very soon launching a 3 hour module with aru batia where it, she's a passionate farmer by the way so you guys must know she's a passionate farmer baker she loves cooking she also specializes in sadhya you love making the sadhya meal as well do you want to tell a little bit about that what sadhya is no so i mean i don't just only do sadhya i sort of like also work with so i'm i mean i'm sort of also discovering more traditional uh, cuisine of india you know so how and it's beautiful when you have it on the plate and you make it like you know all different states of india you kind of make it you literally have all the six states on the plate you know we're literally not missing anything we don't need any sort of fancy sort of addition to our meal we I think we like our country is that we got nutrition already packed inside. So you know, like I sort of make these thalis where I include all six tastes in whatever way it could be chutney, also with you know different ways of preparing millets, different ways of preparing lentils, and how it affects the body. So I also like take into account where which season are we like sort of working in, and 
yeah so i mean yeah not just sadhya i mean i think a lot of like sadhya i think it's perfect also like a perfect example which people have sort of know about which that it has all the six tastes and it's a very nourishing yeah. but also like it's, other, it's- It's called the most balanced meal in Ayurveda. So uh, people usually have sadhya in South of India, like in Kerala, uh, Tamil Nadu, and Karnataka. It's a staple diet one, and weddings and birth and uh, anniversaries are generally marked with a sadhya meal, which is served on a banana leaf one, because banana leaf helps in retaining the nutrients of the food and doesn't react with the food, unlike stainless steel, which is considered unhealthy by the ways in your uh, cooking utensils. And we also have sadhya. which starts with about 3 to 4 side dishes which is different kinds of vegetables that are either astringent in nature pungent or salty to stimulate the metabolic fire and the saliva in the mouth then we also have a sweet dish that we start with and then we have rice with four different kinds of lentils there is a thick one called or called kara kolumbu in tamil nadu i'm sure it's called different names in different uh, parts of the world it's cooked with almost 15 to 20 spices right from fenugreek carom seeds cumin seeds fennel seeds mustard seeds hing which is asafoetida curry leaves chili ginger garlic onion even urad dal is added to it and then we add even coconut grated coconut to it bay leaf uh you can even add coriander to it and a little bit of more seasoning you know with uh uh traditional spices it's almost a concoction of 15 to 20 spices and a series of vegetables and very little lentil in it So it's literally like a thick lentil vegetable broth that you mix with rice. This is so healthy. I assure you, it takes care of all your carbs because there's also white potato and sweet potato in it. Sometimes there's onions and garlic. There's carrots, beetroot. Sometimes even few pieces of radish. Uh, uh, asparagus or French beans can also be added to it. Peas can be added to it. These are all excellent additions. It takes care of your carbs, your proteins, your spices, and also caters to your shadrasa, which is basically tickling. all your taste buds on the tongue and then of course we have the regular dal which is drumstick based which is also an aphrodisiac in nature then we have rasam which is a watery tomato broth which is excellent if you have fever cold and cough you can recover within 12 hours and then we have the yogurt rice and of course you know the sweet dish which is made with milk and vermicelli or uh, sabja seeds sometimes so this meal goes in peaks highs and lows it first you know satiates your taste buds with the sweet dish then stimulates your agni stimulates your saliva increases your appetite and brings it down with a soothing dessert again right aru you must have experienced it in different parts of the country while traveling yeah yeah, yeah. i love rasam <laughs> it's my favorite thing in fact rasam is my go to food whenever i get sick and i'd like to share a recipe with some of you guys it's a very easy to do recipe you take about 4 to 6 juicy tomatoes remove the top and put it in a pan of water and boil it so that the skin wrinkles up and then you peel the skin off chop the or dice the tomatoes into like you know really small pieces with a lot of juice coming out of it keep it separately along with the juicy part and then just heat some coconut oil preferably add few urad dal urad dal is basically the white gram uh the white uh, i don't know what you call it in english it's white lentil white gram urad dal urad dal the broken urad dal the one that we give to horses i wouldn't know the english even i would Okay, so it's basically called urad dal. It's white in color and it's broken. And this is like a staple diet even for horses because it's full of proteins. You add a few urad dal. You can add even mustard seeds if you like. Uh, some cumin seeds, fenugreek, carom seeds, curry leaf, ginger paste, a uh, little garlic, little hing which is asafoetida. Then you can even add peppercorns. About four to eight peppercorns to it, and slice two chilies and add it to it. then you can add some turmeric and pink salt and let these spices roast well the aroma that comes out is amazing you can then add the tomato broth that you've made separately into this concoction and boil it well and towards the end you add the juice of tamarind that has been pre-soaked for at least half an hour garnish with coriander and you can even add a little grated coconut to it to give it a nice sweet taste so this is like an easy recipe that you guys can start making at home starting today Right, Aru, and any recipes that you'd like to share with the viewers before we end the yeah. panel? Yeah, yeah, no. So, but the same thing. Like, so I think somebody is asking uh, for millets for weight loss. I think weight loss and weight gain. So, I think uh, for weight loss, like, I think the best would be jowar. Again, and bajra is actually really nourishing, though. Like, bajra does end up uh, nourishing you. If it's basically just for weight loss, I'd say 
more of brown top brown top will actually make you lose weight really fast like i don't eat brown top because i sort of started eating it i lost so much weight and i'm like no this is got to stop so brown top jowar and barnard also works for weight loss but not so much but jowar uh, and uh, brown top work really well for weight loss weight gain uh, again um, i mean foxil would really help with weight gain proso has a lot of protein proso would help with weight gain which one else would be particularly for weight gain i think i think that's about it kodo even something. ragi ragi helps yeah. lose weight very quickly in fact you know ragi is one of the staple diets we give for a weight loss treatment for a kapha prakriti and kapha can have a whole lot of millet so those of you who are trying to lose weight it's clearly a kapha imbalance let me show you a kapha uh, related millets and grains um you can have azuki beans black beans of course you know those are the beans you can have amaranth which is rajgira barley buckwheat dry cereals corn couscous crackers granola all millets literally muesli oat bran dry oats polenta quinoa rye and seitan all of this is very good for you if you're trying to lose weight the foods that you should have over avoid is bread with yeast cooked oats because they are all juicy and they uh, lead to accumulation of mucus which is better for vata not for kapha gluten pancakes pasta rice and wheat you just stay off pasta rice wheat and gluten you'll see a visible drop in your weight switch to millets and you're definitely going to enjoy the benefits of that right aru yeah yeah for sure no but also like in terms of curing diseases when you come to like the sort of more you know get into details of it so what we generally call is we call jowar bajra ragi as neutral grains so those aren't so if you you know using just millets to sort of cure your diseases the other five millets are actually more useful which is kodo proso little millet uh barnyard brown top these are actually a fox tail these are actually the ones that are sort of called i mean not i mean they're more so used for sort of disease helping the other three we call them actually neutral grains we sort of when we sort of got people who are coming in to who've got a lot of diseases we don't give them jowar bajra uh ragi to sort of cure their diseases so you sort of also have to see what you are using the grain for if you feel you're a very strong person and you know you have like really good digestive fire and stuff then you can literally just start experimenting with just buy a little bit of them just start experimenting with them and whatever like listen to your body however it suits you and have it but if you're sort of Uh, someone who doesn't have so much digestive fire, fire, and you feel like you know you can probably not digest it so much. You should. I mean, you should just try having it first, and then get into it because they can sort of have a drying and a scraping effect in someone who doesn't have a really good digestive fire. But once it builds up, you know, because they do help nourish you. once it builds up once your body gets used to digesting it you can probably actually have all of them once wonderful <laughs> wonderful thank you so much aru for this informative session i hope you know you guys were able to understand the different kinds of millets and it doesn't dampen your spirits to try these millets in your daily regime try to at least include two to three different kinds of millets per week you'll be very pleasantly surprised with the number of health benefits that you have from it try replacing wheat with this try replacing rice and pasta with this and definitely keep maida off your cuisine it's not going to do anybody any good so until our next session i wish you all lots and uh, keep boosting your immunity stay strong and make ayurveda as a way of life not something that you go to when everything else has failed ayurveda is the only thing that can help you fulfill your desire for a long healthy and a happy life so until our next session this is us saying goodbye thank you so much aru and sudakshana for managing the session thanks a lot guys thank you